the issue picks up with the Avengers ambushing the new Xavier school in Australia, where the new student Eva was visiting her parents. As the standard accusations begin to fly, a crowd gathers and people begin to record the incident. As talk of the Phoenix and who is to blame for Xavier's death inevitably resurfaces, Scott and the X-Men take a minute to compose themselves before going on the rhetorical offensive. Scott counters the Avengers' claim by arguing that they are equally at fault, being culpable for their inaction towards fear-fueled hate crimes targeted at the new mutants. Both sides try to reason with the other. Miss Marvel appeals to the X-Men using her past history with them as clout, while the new X-Students appeal to the Avengers by corroborating Scott's stories of mistreatment, but to no avail. The standoff comes to a climax when Hawkeye has had enough of the useless posture. With an arrow in his face, Scott gives Captain America an ultimatum, do something or stand aside. With his hand forced, Cap issues the order for Scott's arrest, but Scott won't come quietly. Before any combat breaks out, Eva uses her powers over time and space to freeze the Avengers in place. Right before teleporting out, Scott gets one final word, a warning towards any who would stand in their way. Upon returning to the new Xavier school, it is obvious that someone set them up, and Magneto surprisingly reveals himself to be the culprit. He informs him of his meeting with S.H.I.E.L.D. and his suspicion that someone in the government is authorizing the use of sentence. He gave up Scott's position to gain S.H.I.E.L.D.'s trust so that later he may guide S.H.I.E.L.D. to the X-Men's advantage. Still unsure of how to feel about Magneto's semi-betrayal, the adult X-Team uses the Avenger's current incapacitation to pay a visit to the Jean Grey School for Higher Learning. It seems a recruiting season is about to begin. So I think Cyclops definitely is about to poach some students from Wolverine. I don't think it's going to be like, I'm going to kidnap a bunch of kids. I think it's going to be more like he's going to offer some of the older students the opportunity to come with him. And it's almost know, like an internship. Yeah. <laughs> come be a revolutionary. Yeah. <laughs> Though I don't think Wolverine or any one of the teachers is going to be down with this. I could see there hypothetically being some teachers who would be open to it. I think this is putting students in harm's way to a ridiculous amount. But some of the students are much older and have kind of already been in that type of scenario. They have, I think but Maybe it's... like Pixie, she might be open to it. I don't think you need two teleporters. <laughs> you can never have too many teleporters. If, if that's one lesson I've learned from the X-Men is you <laughs> always need teleporters and telepaths. Going back to the Wolverine school also does tie in a little bit to AVX consequences at the very end, Scott had left a letter for Wolverine saying, you keep your school open, you keep teaching these kids and providing them a safe place, and I'll make sure the world is safe enough for me to exist. So this sort of seems to be breaking from that a little. Scott's just trying to create his own school. If you're a revolutionary, you need an army. Besides. Well, I think his army kind of proved itself. I mean, the other main point in this issue was them versus the Avengers. And they proved e themselves. Eva really stepped up and just they, they embarrassed proved. them. They embarrassed them, but they proved themselves in getting away. I, in a straight-up fight, I think they don't stand a chance because the rem remnants of the Extinction Team don't really have control of their powers. Eva just completely froze time. and They could have just you know, blasted them right there. But I don't think they're going to do something that underhanded. Talk about painting a bad picture, because a lot of this issue was also about the revolution growing and how they record this interaction between the two, and Scott obviously comes out with the upper hand. And doing anything underhanded would completely diminish the idea of who the revolutionaries are. They're supposed to be the good guys, yeah. basically. That's they're fighting they're the good fight. Exactly. They're fighting tyranny. Captain America representing Avenger yeah. tyranny. And they had the opportunity to completely strike them down right now, but they chose not to because they're the good guys. And, like, yeah, like that makes them look like the better people. Kind of going back to that Avenger fight, was there any point, parts that stuck out to you in particular? I found, well, it wasn't too much a fight as just... Conversation. A, yeah, a conversation. I, I found it interesting that the Avengers really just gave all of the power to the X-Men when Scott just says, give us a minute. Let <laughs> us just make a plan, and then we'll come back and talk to you. Captain America's just too nice of a guy. Is that what it comes down to? He's just not, not a very good negotiator. He's had multiple situations where he comes up to Scott and says, hey, you need to stop this. I can't... Scott just gets away with doing anything after that. Um, one dynamic I did kind of like in that uh, conversation, though, was I thought Scott actually seemed a little timid at the beginning, a little unsure of himself. But then when magic kind of suits him up and puts him in his costume, he seemed to gain kind of confidence, some bravado, you know, started playing for the camera. Uh, any thoughts? I think, one, I want to talk about the costumes in a bit, but I think it's the image Maybe Scott is a little unsure of himself right now, but as Cyclops, as the symbol, he's become more than that, you know? Mm -hmm. He's the symbol of the entire mutant 
revolution or maybe even the mutant race now. He knows the rhetoric, and so once he steps into that role, he can just keep blasting away. So getting back to costumes, though, we saw Magneto finally in his new armor. One thing I noticed about Magneto is, my god, his arms are huge. Like That's ripped. <laughs> guy is massively ripped for his age. <laughs> but Scott, his costume, I think, is more about the symbol. At the end, where he gets his last word in, he does the X symbol. And we, we saw him do that in one of the earlier shoes of All New X-Men as well. So it's kind of like throwing up the sign. Yeah, and that, that sign is just plastered across his face, which is now plastered across all media, and I think that hammers home the idea of X-Men. Yeah. He's a symbol. Yeah. Jumping back to Magneto, uh, we finally found out where he seems to stand. In the first issue, we thought there's the potential for him to be a double agent, and then in our second review, we said, uh, it looks like he's not a double agent. I was still but holding it, out hope, though. But it turns out <laughs> we're wrong, and he is a double agent. Or is he? What do you think? Now, I'm not so sure. Uh, he comes across and says, I am a double agent. I'm working both sides. But the fact that he's telling them, it almost makes me seem that maybe Magneto's got some other plans in the works. He's acting like he's on both teams, but he's going to come out ahead somehow above everyone else. Another important... That's what the old Magneto would do. Yeah. Another important thing that Magneto did in this issue was when Scott's like, hey, you can't make these decisions behind our back. He said... Who elected you leader? You know, like, I don't remember voting. So it's almost like he's now taking a stab at Scott's leadership role. I think Magneto still has resentment towards Scott because he has, in the first issue where he talks to S.H.I.E.L.D., I do think that there's some truth. Like losing his powers. Losing his powers. And his best losing friend. his friend. Exactly. And so the fact that he then has to be a subordinate of that guy, I think someone as proud as Magneto, it would be a constant struggle to yeah. take orders. At the same time, I think um, the fact that Xavier is now dead and Scott is sort of at fault, I think uh, in the eyes of many mutants, that makes him like lose his role as leader because a lot of Scott's power was derived from Xavier. He doesn't have Xavier's blessing anymore, so why should he be leader in a lot of people's eyes? As a grade for Uncanny X-Men number two, what would you give it? I'm going to give this issue a 4.5. It was really fulfilling. It hit every story point kind of going on in Bendis' X-Men right now. And, you know, you got to a lot of closure from AVX, a lot of character development on Scott, and I can't wait for them to go to the Wolverine School next issue. I'm going to give this issue a 4.5 out of 5 as well. My God, I was excited after this issue. It ends on a really exciting point. The entire conversation with the Avengers was great, a lot of points covered, and it was hilarious. Thanks for watching B3 Comics review of Uncanny X-Men number 3. Before we go, we have a question for you. So it looks like Scott is going to the Wolverine school in the next issue. If he is going to steal some students, who would you like to see him poach? Leave your thoughts in the comments below, and if you like what you see, please give us a thumbs up.